Good morning from La Land, where I have to say that waking up to the newly restored facade of the chapel is pretty marvellous. It's a pretty exciting morning at La Land because we are standing in the Grand Salon, the room that is basically storing all of the panelling for the Grand Salon. But now it is storing more panelling because we have found the panelling for the bedroom directly above the Grand Salon, Chambre Perse. Chambre Perse and Chambre des Oiseaux are out of action at the moment until we have these beams replaced with steels. A lot of you have been asking how the renovations are going in the Grand Salon. And because this is such a huge job, the walls need to come down above, the entire floor needs to come out, the huge beams need to be removed and replaced with steels, and then it all needs to be built up again. And because it's so huge, we've made two decisions. One is that financially it can't be done until the chapel is finished, because I can only deal financially with one huge renovation at a time. And the other is that we would like the same people who've been restoring the chapel and the same architect to oversee it all, which will free Amory up to do the job that he loves most, which is the actual panelling, because Amory is a fantastic builder. In fact, he's a fantastic builder, plumber, every single trade that he turns his hand to, he is great at. But as his great love is carpentry, I feel that we're wasting his time using him on the other things. So we'll be getting a big building firm in to do all of the structural work, and then Amory can focus on the woodwork and the carpentry. Now, this thing in front of me might not look like much, but it's actually very exciting, bear with me, because our friend Bonnie, who many of you might remember because she designed the Downton Abbey eyewear, the glasses and the sunglasses, she has moved to France, she has a chateau, and she's been looking at all of the auctions, and in one auction, she saw this beautiful panelled room coming up for sale, and she sent it to Philip and to me to have a look at. And it was unusual to find that panelling in a sale because it was actually the sale of the interior contents of a very, very famous restaurant in Paris. So it was mainly plates and cutlery and glasses and all sorts of things for the restaurant, but they were also completely redoing their interior decoration. So slipped into the sale was all of the panelling from their salon. This is the room that it was in. The panelling is in solid oak. It dated from the early 20th century because the restaurant last had a big revamp in about 1925. And we think that the panelling dates from around that time or possibly they put in late 19th century panelling when they were redoing the room. So all of this panelling is going to go in Perse. In terms of a timeline for all of this work, I've just spoken to the architect and I've told him that I would like all of the estimates and the builders in place to start work on the 1st of November. So fingers crossed in just a few months time, all of this will be able to start because the chapel should be done by then. Oh, this looks incredible. This, this is up. I'm trying to this is the out. first time we're actually unwrapping them and seeing them properly. I think this side is nicer. Actually, they're different. Oh, they're, they're both different. Yeah. <gasps> okay, that's the back, I think. So this will be the interior, no. Oh my goodness, I just don't know. Yeah, I think this is the front, definitely. We'll have to check. I think the other one looks like yeah. this as well, so this must be the This back. should be in the room. Yeah. Here we have one of the panels itself, which is just so beautiful. The carving is extraordinary. All in solid oak. And my cousin told me that just to buy the wood for all of this panelling for the oak would be about 12,000 euros. And the panels themselves in total cost four and a half thousand euros. So a huge thank you to Bonnie who spotted that bargain and sent it to us because it's going to transform this room. As many of you know, I was feeling really low about this room because I love the wallpaper in this room. It dates from the turn of the 20th century as well, actually. And I've always loved how we have vintage wallpapers in many of the guest rooms at the chateau. And so when I found out that we would have to lose it on this entire wall and that entire wall, so two of the walls in the room, I was pretty crushed. But I think it's really nice in life when you're forced to make a change that you don't want to make, that you make sure that what you end up with is far better than what you had in the first place. And you turn it around and make lemonade out of lemons. And I think that this has done that. And also what I love about this is because it's going in front of the existing walls, it means that the little bits of vintage wallpaper that we do still have are left completely unaffected behind it. And we don't have to rip those off. Now we might still 
use this. We might have it digitally reproduced and still use it because we will have to have big square areas of either fabric or wallpaper within this panelling as they had in the original salon. In the original salon they had very big paintings of landscapes but here we'll do it in a far more French bedroom style which will be fabric or wallpaper within those. So we could look at braconnier fabrics which are very traditionally used in that kind of setup or as I say we could continue to use this pattern and keep that sense of history. That's something that Philip and I are looking at at the moment. And meanwhile I've been going down a rabbit hole of research about the history of the restaurant that these panels come from. You know how I absolutely love to research the stories behind objects. I knew of the restaurant, everyone in France does, it's called La Tour d'Argent and it's a three-star Michelin restaurant in Paris, but I didn't know all of its history. What are you doing, Lancelot? No, we're in the middle of a historical chat, this is not helping. Shall we try that, darling? It's just more dignified. And you're nothing if not a dignified dog. It's the oldest restaurant in Paris. It dates from 1500 and something. And in fact, people like Cardinal Richelieu actually hosted banquets in that restaurant. Henry IV was the first French king to introduce the fork to France. And this was the first French restaurant to use the fork. So a lot of very exciting things have happened here in the past, but maybe in recent times, there are none more exciting than the fact that it is the restaurant from Ratatouille. Yes, the entire film was based on both the story of La Tour d'Argent because they'd lost their head chef and they were looking for a new one at the time, and also the building itself. It overlooks Notre Dame over the Seine, just as the restaurant in Ratatouille does. So we have the panels from Ratatouille's restaurant and we are thinking that once we put it all up in place, we're going to need a little mouse hole just at the bottom with a little Ratatouille figurine peeking out. <laughs> this was the silly little door that we used before to come into this room, but can you imagine a future? Hello, I'm Stephanie. Welcome to my guest bedroom. It's going to feel very right because oh, I love big double doors to come into a bedroom, but it won't be here because we're removing the bathroom. It's really a very, very huge job, which is why we haven't been able to start yet. The bathroom will go, which means that there will be an extra window in this room, which means it will find its symmetry once again. There'll be the fireplace in between two windows with the bed opposite, and you'll walk into this room sort of over here, this way through these double doors. Which is the original way, actually. Look. The original way into the room. So if you, we, that. yeah, if we go here. Yes. You can see, see the double doors. Uh, originally, big double doors coming straight into the bedroom. And that's exactly what will be happening again. So the ones that you just saw will go here. These doors, the original ones to La Lampe, will still be here. They'll be there. You walk in this tiny little entrance. There'll be a door through to the ensuite bathroom. And then you come through into, into the bedroom. Into room. But also it's important that these are going here because these are actually the same as these. So they're all in the same area. I think someone's trying to get your attention, Philip. I know. I think he's not getting what enough attention it? right what now. What is it? <laughs> he's like, stop texting. What about me? Oh, actually, whilst we are looking at this magnificent dog, I think he would like to tell you all something about his health because he was concerned about the comments that, about him and his eyes and needing to go to the vet. We just wanted to let you all know that he has been to the vet, I mean, many times. It's just normal in France. They, they go regularly. But his eyes do indeed have an issue because they're always very runny because he's got a blocked duct between his eyes and his nose. So instead of running internally, fluid runs externally. But the vet said to us it can be fixed with an operation. But as it's purely aesthetic and it's not bothering him at all, it would effectively be plastic surgery for him. And much though he does want to look his best for the Chateau Diaries, I think that giving him plastic surgery for it will be going a bit far. But don't worry, he's absolutely fine. I actually want to just stay there looking at the panelling for ages because I'm so excited about it. But Annalise has arrived to give me a blow dry so that I can look super glamorous this evening for the guests. You three look like the three graces. <laughs> and your dress. Yeah. Is it new? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yeah. The product is going in, but then we're going to have to have a little pause for tick removal on Lancelot. Tick, tick, tick. This is the tick, tick, tick removal tick, team. Tick. It's going to take three of us to remove one tick. Yes, Lancelot, you are the centre of attention. Always. Yeah, always. It's, very <laughs> it's like all those, how many people does it take to do a light bulb jokes? 
How many? The thing is, you've got to be so careful because you need to make sure you get yeah, the head. Yeah, get the head. How many narcissists does it take to uh, change your life, Bob? How many? One. They just hold it up and they think the world revolves around them. I'm really trying to be delicate because I don't want to hurt him. He's actually very tough. Oh, he's being so good. I think that's it. Got him? He's got the yeah. head. And the head, everything. You he's are a boy. genius. You're getting a and treat. You did so, you are so getting many good boys. I love it, Annalise. I love it. Thank you so much. You're very well. I do always feel about 100 times prettier after you've been here. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm sort of shuffling around like a zombie and then you arrive. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that to everyone today. Because I'm worth it. Because I'm worth it. <laughs> like that. Look at You can be like an advert. I liked it when they changed it to because you're worth it. Because you're worth it. I thought it was really it. nice. That, you are worth it. I am trying mm -hmm. to edit. Sitting on the bed happily. But it's very distracting because the two cutest creatures on the planet are just distracting me all the time. It's like me? What? Me, me, the cutest me, that'll be me. He's what, what did I just say? What did I just you say? You wanted to prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my watch for the week. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's what you call order chien. One of our guests is a tango instructor, and apparently there is a tango lesson going on downstairs. Lots, lots excited. So, <laughs> we're going to go and see how we get on. Remember, tango is about kindness about taking care of the other person, taking care, taking care of the people around you. <laughs> this is a collective dance we do all together and it works super beautiful when we all go in a same sense, mm -hmm. in a balance. So yeah. it's a little bit like life. Let's be kind, let's be compassionate. <laughs> It is. Good. Isn't that stunning? Right. It's like being on holiday. I love this. Your whole dress, the cocktail, the work. And um, the pinky. Yeah, you got the pinky out. Good. It's like a little party in here this evening. And a party in there too. I saw. Oh, blue cheese. Blue cheese. And walnut. And candied walnuts. And apple. apple. Yeah. Mm. Chambord. Okay, that looks delicious. Oh, Jean Bois, well, I hadn't even noticed the ham. I tucked in there. Mm. Well, Maria, food is beautiful, but I have to say, Thor's giving you a run for your money. He's looking quite picturesque out there. Fountain, alliums, Lily's coming, and Thor. Oh, even some lupins and irises in the background. Nothing as beautiful as you, though, Thor. Thank you, darling. Oh, that is one of the world's most beautiful sights, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. Much. So for main course, we have a honey roasted duck breast oh, with mm. potato puree, adame and harry gouvert. Carrots from the garden, baby carrots. <laughs> and confit onion from the garden. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Annalise. <laughs> we will be finishing our meal with a milk and chocolate mousse with raspberry sorbet and strawberries and wild strawberries from the garden and a little meringue raspberry top. Thank you. Thank you. So that's in the wild strawberries are out. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm so excited. I watch you eat them on TV and I just want one. <laughs>